think he's he's very ex he knows so much it's it's just hard for him to to share it all. So I thought you were gonna say it's hard for me to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to be nice. Oh, okay. to be nice. That's funny. Did we think you all with us? Uh, <laughs> we did like, house calls. Yeah, I do house calls. Yeah. House calls. Yeah. <laughs> you can't kidnap me. No. So, no. That would be good. So please welcome Take it away. Thank you. Thank you. All right, ladies, good evening. How are you doing? Dinner was good, I'm assuming, correct? Yeah. yeah. So just a little bit about me so you can kind of understand um, where I'm coming from and how it works with social media. So, uh, you know, my name is Burton Kelso. I'm a small tech company called Integral. We're basically like Geek Squad, except we don't hire geeks. Um, our goal is to make technology fun and exciting. So everything that Geek Squad does, as far as talking over your head and all that other nonsense, we don't do. Um, my, I'm passionate about technology and helping people with technology. So I'm the guy that's read all the manuals. Um, I love technology and I want to make technology exciting and fun for you ladies. Now, our company, Integral, does not help with social media, but in order for us to thrive and be domineering, like um, you know, getting TV attention, um, we have to utilize social media. Social media has helped our business in numerous ways. Uh, about six years ago, I connected with Lauren Halifax from Fox 4. Everyone's familiar with Lauren, right? Yeah. Connected with Lauren Halifax on LinkedIn as a random thing. I sent her a friend request, she accepted, I was elated. Uh, but then there was no interaction, right? So I'm like, well darn it. But I constantly shared good content on LinkedIn and then one day out of the blue, I got a message from Lauren saying, that said, hey, would, do you want to read some of these tech tips on, on air, on TV? And you know what I said, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 It was instant. It wasn't like, well, I don't know. Let me think about it. <laughs> so it happened. And then it generated from me connecting with other producers and TV personalities on air. And so now I'm on all of the local television stations as the go-to tech guy. It's good because it's good publicity for my company. There's uh, five of us total in our company, um, but it's good publicity. The challenge is, is when the new me when the media calls, you got to go running. There's no hey, you know maybe I can make it down there next week. Those reporters and producers are on a deadline, so when they need somebody, you have to rise to the challenge and go out there and get on television. So that social media has worked in that way. It has also worked in a way of letting our customers contact us. So we'll have people that are, I won't say lazy, shy is the word I should use. That, and sometimes they want free advice, so I, I'm not too keen on that. But, you know, we'll get the messages on social media of, hey, I've got this issue, what can you do to fix it? Or, of course, it's the quick fix, or can I pick your brain, which are the ones I kind of take my time answering because, you know, I run a business. I, I mean, and there's many opportunities for people to come out and learn free tech advice from me because I go out to various business organizations and talk tech. So it's like, come hunt me down if you wanna find some tech tips. Don't try to pick my brain on social media, especially during the day. But um, um, it, it's helped out in many ways. And so I know for organizations, that's the burning question. I guess I need to start seeing if the clicker works. Uh -oh. oh, there we go, oh, just, there we go. So yeah, with, you know, in your organizations, it's. One more thing, right? You run a nonprofit, you've got your own chapter, and you want to continue to maintain a base with your members, but it's just one more thing to deal with, right? You send out the newsletters, maybe you make the phone calls, and then people are saying, well, geez, you gotta get on social media because it's a good way to stay in contact with people. And it is, but you know, sometimes it can be more work, especially if you just don't understand how social media works, right? Because I mean, there's so many platforms out there Facebook, you got LinkedIn, you got Twitter, um, I'm for, oh, Pinterest, right? You got Instagram. So there's many, so many platforms out there. So it's like, what do you do? And I mean, it, you'd be like, and you know, that probably happened to me. I'm like, oh my God, social media. So yeah, over a six year period, I just pulled out all my hair and, <laughs> hey, but we're, we're busy. You know, I have no hair though, but you know, like, hey. You know, but that's the challenge. You've got one more thing to manage in your organization. I gotta remember which way to roll the wheel, the clicker doesn't want to click. 
There we go. But the thing you have to realize about many business organizations is that people join because they want to be a part of. And sometimes if you don't convey that message that, hey, we're a family, we're a part, we want to make things happen, you start to lose membership. And in our connected and digital lives, it's easy for that to happen because we have so much information thrown at, thrown at us that we may get distracted. But as an organization, we want to be part of that distraction. We want to get that message out on social media. Um, so you got to do it. We also join organizations because we want to be connected to people, right? We want to be connected, connected to resources. And I know a lot of the chambers that I've been on the board of and been members of, that's their biggest challenge, is that they aren't giving out that valuable information that members want. If it's a business organization, people want to be connected to other people. Um, they want to be connected to resources that are going to help them grow and expand their business. And when you run an organization, you have to be able to provide those resources. And if you're a nonprofit, you have to be able to provide those resources at a minimal cost. And social media allows you to do that because heck, they're all free, right? Yes, they are, unless you boost your post on Facebook and then it ain't so free anymore. And I'll, I'll say this, and I don't have anything about boosting. I'm not a big fan of boosting posts. And before I get into those terms, you ladies here, who, who knows what boosting is as far as a post on, oh, yeah, I got some tech savvy women here. I was getting ready to boost, but I'm going to wait till you. You were about to boost? I was just about to boost my. Uh, oh, okay. No, I mean, you can, but you have to look at the algorithms and social media to figure out if that if boosting is good for you, right? So, that, I mean, that's something you need to think about. But social media allows you to spread the word about your organization. I mean, it's one of the best methods, right? So if you, you have a website, if you're smart, you can optimize your website so that certain keywords will pop up and get you to the top of Google. Because everyone wants to get to the top of Google, right? But it's, it's, it's impossible. Because everyone's trying to fight for those keywords. With social media, if you, if, you get those, if you get the engagement, then people will come to your social media page. As far as a website, oh, it's a lot of work. But I will tell you this, any organization, and if, you have a website for your chapter and you're like, well, maybe we shouldn't have it. You gotta kinda gotta keep it. Because social media should just be one arm of how you reach out to people. Your website has to be the foundation for your organization. You have to have a website. Because what happens? What if one of the social media channels goes away that you've been reaching out to people? Like, I, there's not many women in here using Google Plus, right? No? no? I knew it, but still, it's going away. Yeah. It's going away. And that can happen with any social media platform. And so when you put together a campaign, your goal should be for your organization is to collect emails and names and get them to understand that you have a website because you cannot count on any social media channel being around forever, right? I mean, heck, if Payless Shoes is going away. Yeah. Isn't that horrible? Yes, it is. That's bad. Payless is going away. <laughs> darn it, if you can't count on Payless in today's world, that means nothing is sacred, nothing is permanent. So you've got to remember that. So let's go through these tips. So number one, you, and I've got my cheat screen here, but it's like, what? Because that screen's blocking. But yeah, you, the most important rule of social media is sharing your story. That's what your organization has to do on social media, share your story. You don't want to put out, hey, we meet, we, we are going to get you this much business, this many people show up to our events. It's not about that. It's about sharing your story. So even if it's like five people at your uh, chapter or in your organization, you've got to share that story and cultivate those relationships in order for people to want to be a part of your business. Because people do business with people they know. Who can finish it? No, like, and trust. trust. Thank you, yes. I knew someone in here would finish that. But that's what it's all about. It's about getting people to know, like, and trust you and to be part of your organization. So share that story. How can you do that? I went to a slide too far. So you want to highlight achievements of you and your staff. So if someone's got an award, uh, you definitely want to highlight it on social media because it's telling your story. It's not bragging. It's good. People want to see people succeed. In fact, Facebook and social media <laughs> wants to see you succeed. How many of you ladies in here, when you pack coach Congratulations on social media or on Facebook. What happens? 
Come on, someone knows. Your lights up. You get balloons and confetti. There's another one. I forget what the word is, but yeah, it's the same thing. When you type that word in, it's like celebration. Yeah. So that's what. So I like the good thing. Make sure that you're sharing with people that you're making positive moves. You know, no selling. Is you go to social media, media hell if you sell, right? Because seriously, and we'll talk about the algorithms, you put a selling post or, you, or, you, or you're trying to share or like or get someone to um, go to your website, your actual rankings will go down on Facebook and all of the social media platforms. Mm -hmm. In fact, post a link to another website and see what happens. Maybe one or two people will see it as opposed to a photo or a video of you and your staff or your members <laughs> cheesing and making it ha happen. Right? Like, I didn't see anybody taking a group photo the night, right? <laughs> Our video when we were doing the right left game. Those are the things that you should do as an organization, show how much fun you're having. Um, put the spotlight on your members. One of the things that I've seen with a lot of business organizations is that they do not spotlight their members. How awesome is that if you're a business owner or an individual and you have made an achievement and someone recognizes you for that achievement? Even if you have like member of the month, you know, just post that on social media and give that story of that individual and let people know about it. I mean, a lot of the chambers, and I wish I could I'm filming because I can't, I can't say chamber names, but many of the chambers I've been um, members of don't do that. It's about come to this fundraiser, come spend some money, but they don't highlight their members. And for business organizations, one of the things that people complain about the most is that I did not get a return on my investment. And most of that investment doesn't have to be monetary. Sometimes it's the fact that the organization did not invest in the person. So social media allows you to do that. And the great thing about when you highlight a spotlight on members, you can tag them in your post and it doesn't matter the platform, it could be Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, and if you tag them, then their friends are gonna see it. They're gonna tag, they're happy that they have the spotlight. So they're gonna tag your organization and people are like, what the heck? I didn't even know that this organization existed. So then people get uh, interested and they wanna become a part of the feel good story. So put a spotlight on your members, it's gonna do good. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> crazy, right? All right, so show how you're helping members grow. Um, think of, thinking Bigger Business Media does this quite a bit. Uh, Katie Bean, I think, runs that, or that magazine now. But every issue, they'll put, well, now so-and-so's added this many people or this organization has, um, this organization has grown. But you have to show how you help that organization or that individual organization grow. So post those on social media. If you've got programs uh, that you're doing and you've got speakers coming in like me, like tonight, mm -hmm. Put that stuff on social media so that you can show that you're putting on workshops that are gonna help people grow. People join organizations because they want that resource of, of information so that they can come to a dinner or a luncheon and learn some valuable information, they're gonna do that. Put it out there, it's a great social media post. And I was gonna say too, if you got questions or anything, please raise your hand because I don't wanna be up here lecturing. I mean, I like being in front of the crowd, but I want it interactive too because part of this as far as social media is that you need to walk away with material and information that you can utilize in the real world so that when you go post tonight, you know how awesome Burton was and you can, you know, you'll know how to do it. You won't be calling me up saying, hey, I wanna say something on Instagram. How do I make that happen? It's like, weren't you listening during the presentation? I said that. Uh, show how your organization helps people. Um, yeah, I mean, if there's, you know, if you're doing fundraisers or any of that stuff, post it online. People like seeing that feel good stuff. So if ABWA goes to harvesters and like stacks canned goods, post it. People like seeing organizations do that. The more fun, nonprofit, feel good stories you post on social media, people are gonna love that. And it's a part of the organization's story too. That's part of your mission. That's part of what you're doing to help the community and help your, your memberships out. You have a question. Yes. So if you are in sales, what? How does Facebook look at it if you have a fundraiser and you post about the fundraiser, but you also provide a link of your business because that's how the fundraiser happens? Uh, that's why it's important to have a social media page for your business so that you can direct them to the business page. Right. 
So let's say you make a post and say our organization is having a fundraiser. You put the link on the to the website, Facebook, and all of them, it's not just Facebook, all of them go, oh, man, they're leaving, that sucks. And you know, you hate when people leave you, right? Social media is the same way, they don't want you to leave. Just think of it as the, the crazy ex-boyfriend, right? Who's like, I don't want you to leave. <laughs> I, I, it's, it's that way, you know? So you have to stick around with your social media platform and create it so it's a community on itself. So if you have an organization, um, you need to have a page for your organization on Facebook. If you're promoting on LinkedIn, you need to create a LinkedIn page for your organization so that if you want people to see about that event, rather than redirecting them to the website, then you have them, you just share a link from the business page on your page and then more people right. see it. Right. Same thing with Instagram and uh, with Twitter. So and just, said just share a link to your business page? What I, what I, yeah, a link, or just share it, because you wouldn't so call you, it a link. You would you create share. it on your business page and then share, share it. Share it on your personal page, yes. Oh, okay. And it tricks the algorithms too. We talked about that. Yeah. That's pretty darn awesome. But yeah, so I mean, one of the things, and we're going to backtrack a bit as far as what you should do for your organizations. I would recommend that you create a business page for all of the social media platforms out there. Yes, people say I don't understand Twitter. Twitter's pretty darn simple. It's like Facebook, except like, you post the same stuff on Twitter. You don't have to understand how people engage in Twitter. The main, main thing is is that you post because your post on social media should use the Twitter rules, which is basically you keep your text down to 240 characters or less, so no long stories. Include a picture and a video, and then you just share it out. That that works for Instagram, it works for Twitter, works for Facebook. Doesn't really work for Pinterest though, because you're just pinning photos, right? But you have a description on there. But short and sweet, but graphics and video is what drives it. But you need to create a business page for all of those platforms because different people gravitate to different social media platforms. And I'm about to show you an example. Ladies, show of hands, who uses Facebook? Of course, right? Let's go down the line. LinkedIn, ladies. Ooh, getting pretty good, that's good. How about Instagram? Oh, see how the hands are starting to go down, right? Pinterest, ladies? Well, I knew more hands would go up with Pinterest because Pinterest is geared towards women. Um, am I forgetting one? Twitter. Twitter, see? But remember, there are certain people that gravitate towards certain social media platforms. So if you want to cover the whole gamut, you want to be on all of them. Yeah. Isn't Twitter kind of fading away, though? I've heard that the use is way down. Facebook's fading away, too. Yeah, because of all the cybersecurity right. breaches, people are, they got the hashtag, uh, forget Facebook or leave Facebook. So what about Snapchat? Is that, yeah, I know. Yeah. I mean, you could, but yeah. remember, if you're trying to go to a younger audience, it's not bad to have a Snapchat. I mean, it's harder, your messages are there, but at least you have a presence. Because the thing about social media channels, when you have your own profile or your organization's profile, on social media, when people Google you, your social media platform or profiles are gonna come up first in the Google. So if someone's looking for an ABWA chapter and you're on you know, LinkedIn or on Facebook, those links tend to come up first. Right. Hate to tell you that, but that's true. So if, that's why I say it's important for you to create a business page for on all of the social media platforms so that people can engage with you on all of them because you never know, even with LinkedIn. You can see there's a wider audience of women in here that are on LinkedIn. That wasn't the case two or three years ago. LinkedIn is really shot up in popularity, so you want to really stay ahead of the curve. So if you're not on Instagram, or if your organization's not on Instagram, put it on Instagram, because you can have a business page on Instagram and a personal page, right? Go, yes? Okay, so I've got 10 pages on 10 different formats. How do I keep track of them all? That's gonna take all day. No, we'll, we'll, we'll get Is to that. that. Going? I'm going. We're getting there. <laughs> the slow your roll. We're getting there. Yes. Yes. Slow your roll. All right. So brag about your accomplishments. So if your organization's gotten awards and stuff like that, please brag. People like seeing that. They want to. People want to be with the winner. They want to be with winning organizations. So if you're winning achievements and stuff like that, post it on social media. Uh, if you got an awards banquet. Yeah, that's awesome. Do a live video. Post the awards online. Like. Wait a minute, no one, 
Deborah, what's up with them? You didn't post any of the, um, what did you just do with the mosquito? Not mosquito, <laughs> dragonflies. <laughs> 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 But that would have been a great example because I love I love that. You may have to recreate that sometime on video. Just put some mm -hmm. cardboard cutouts there like you're doing in ceremony. Every I mean it was great. That instead of the year of the the year of the pig, the year of the dragonfly, that whole ceremony was social media worthy. It really was. So that's something that all of you should think about. Because it would be yeah, I know. Should have recorded it. Right? So anyway. Good deal. Uh, and like I said earlier, you want to definitely create social media pages on all of the platforms. I hate to tell you that, but you know, you, you, you want to reach a wider audience, you've got to have a wider, a wide amount of pages on social media. So number two, when you post, you want to focusing focus on sharing and engaging with people and enlightening people, not selling. You don't want to promote, you don't want to sell. You don't want to say, hey, we've got, and when I say sell, yeah, we've got our member um, fundraiser going, or, or drive. You know, you get a 10% discount, which, you know, mm -hmm. the drive going down, and how many people see it, we've got a discount. They're lowering it down. So none of that sells these stuff, because social media doesn't want to see it. So show people how to make effective connections. This is going to be fun. I've been waiting for this, and <laughs> I kind of forgot about it. So who's got LinkedIn app on their phone? That's only a handful of you ladies? Okay, open, bring, open up the app. I'm gonna show you something awesome that you should do with every ABWA event that you do. What app? Link, LinkedIn, LinkedIn, not Facebook. So who's got LinkedIn? All right, I'm gonna use you as the, as the guinea dragonfly. Notice I didn't say pig. Right. Well here, go back in LinkedIn. So ladies, if you go to the main LinkedIn page, hold on, okay. and then down at the very bottom, not home, next to home, there's two people there. Mm -hmm. Click on them. Once you click on the two people, there is a section at the top that says find nearby. Do you see that? Yeah. Turn it on and watch the magic happen. When you turn find nearby on, everyone who has the LinkedIn app and has it turned on, it will locate them in this area, and then you can connect with people. Okay, here, let me go around the room. Let's go around the room. So click on the two people. Oh, so click on the two people down at the bottom, and then go find nearby on. It's off, yeah, at the top. Yeah, turn it on. You find it? Yeah, you got it. You're okay. You can find your mind. Oh, that's downloading. Oh, you're downloading the app? You ladies, you ladies find it? Do you get to find your mind on? How awesome is that? So think about it. If you had a networking event and you said, hey, I want everyone here to stay connected to each other, you just turn find nearby on and it will find anyone within a 500 foot radius. Now, just for safety, no, 500 foot. That's what I was going to say. For safety reasons, for, for safety reasons, LinkedIn doesn't make it where it uses GPS location services. So it's not like you'll go to some networking event. There's some creeper there that can like track you from home. It only does it within 500 foot radius. And obviously, you can turn it on and off at your discretion. But in order to get more people engaged, Find Nearby is a great way to get people engaged. Another cool LinkedIn tool, all right? I'm like disappearing does, off does camera. Does this mean every time you need to go back and turn it on? When yes, you do, yes, you do. But you would wanna make that announcement at an event or as people are checking in and say, hey, if you wanna make more connections tonight, turn on LinkedIn Find Nearby and then that more people will be able to connect with each other, right? So another one is the LinkedIn QR code. How many ladies are familiar with that? The LinkedIn QR code? I'll show you how it works. Both of you ladies have LinkedIn, right? Oh, you're like, no. Okay. Let me, can I borrow your phone? Okay, all right. So, do you, you have the app on your phone? You're, you're, you're logging in. Okay, who's got an app up? Okay, let's do it. All right, so you can do the LinkedIn QR code thing. So what you do is under search, there's like four goofy looking squares. So you, you hit them. Go inside the search window. Uh, you're, right, uh, you're like getting ahead of me. Oh, <laughs> there you go, right here. Ah, okay. And so, there you go, hit it. 
there, okay, so what LinkedIn will do is it'll pull up your QR codes. So either you can generate a code or you can scan a code with your phone's camera. So let me hit allow. So let me pull up the code here. So, well, I don't know what you're doing. Pull your phone back more. And then you can you can connect. What's the purpose of this? No business cards. Because you're connected directly automatically. Let me show you. Who's got LinkedIn? Who's up? Who's ready? Okay, so here, let's scan it. That's all you do. You're already connected with that. Okay, who's next? Nancy, I see you. Skip, 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 skip. I see a bunch of people. See where the squares are? Click it. Then hit enable your camera. There you go. So there's my code. So then just position it. Boom. You're in there, right? My phone's recording. Awesome, isn't it? Oh. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I have the chocolate. You guys will have to wait. You, you'll have to wait until I'm done with recording my phone to connect with me on LinkedIn. Yes, you are. When you scan their code, you're connecting with that person. So rather than worrying about business cards, you can just scan a code and connect. Do you see me? Yeah. But ladies, that's an excellent way that you can get people to connect. And if you want to, we can play scan LinkedIn. You can play scan QR code with Burton after the presentation. Or we can do find nearby. But anyway, one of, that's one of the ways you can use social media that make people have effective connections. Is by foregoing the business cards and getting the direct connections. So find nearby on LinkedIn. Snapchat has it too. And I think Facebook has QR code, but it's not as cool. But yeah, make effective connections. So another thing that you can do, if there's some serious information that you want to share, make sure you post it with a funny picture, like this one here. I have a ton of followers, but I need help improving social media. Misspell a word. I guarantee you, people will post on your wall. So maybe you could do that as an organization. Just spell, misspell a word, and then people like 50,000 will say, hey, you misspelled that word. But, you know, but if you do the funny photo with serious information, it gets more engagement. Um, my favorite, posting two images and let your, let your fans figure out the best. So even though it doesn't have to do with the organization, remember, you're connecting people. So ladies, by show of hands, we've got an apple pie and a cherry pie. Show of hands, who likes the apple? All right, what about the cherry pie? All right, see? But if people are engaged and passionate about it, you know? So those are the types of posts that are going to get people engaged into your social media page. Uh, tag influencers and brands in post because they get, you get people attracted to your event. Even if it's someone who's running another business organization, tag them. Or if you know an influencer that you want to be a part of your organization, tag them. Everyone loves to be tagged in a post and it doesn't matter if it's on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, tag them. And tag brands too, so if you, I don't know. Oh, a good one. There's Russell Stover's candy here tonight, correct? Oh, yeah. Why wouldn't we take a photo of Russell Stover's and say, you, Russell Stover's was the highlight of our business meeting tonight? Because when you start tanning, tagging brands like that, they start to become attack, attack, or attracted to your organization. Maybe they'll donate some free product. You know, you never think about that. Abby. <laughs> All you have to do is ask. I said maybe. I love you. Said maybe, but any any brand you can do that. It's happened in our business. We tag specific brands, and next thing you know, we're getting free products. So it really does work. So tag them. So influencers, though. So like tonight, I already have a picture of you speaking, and I will post it for our our Facebook. Thing. Right. But I'm not friends with you. How can I tag you? You should be able to tag me so on tag. any of the platforms. Yeah, you can be tag. friends with somebody. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You don't. Have, yeah. Or you could follow. You could follow me. Because, I mean, I'm at my max at Facebook. Sorry, I had to create a public figure page. 5,000 uh, friends? Yes, 5,000 friends. Yes, that's the limit. Wow. Hey, I'm going to try it. 
Yeah. All right, so but you can tag bad. anyone, and it doesn't matter if you're friends with them or not. So, but yes, tag them, tag them because it, it, it generates attention. Because then I feel obligated to tag ABWA, which already has, mm -hmm. right? On, on social media, beat you ladies to the punch. <laughs> so that's how I roll. All right, have fun with weird holidays. <laughs> ladies, I need someone on their smartphone to look up. What is to that, na what is National Day of today? Today. today. I thought some, someone normally just says, hey, today's National Day of whatever, right? It's not Margarita Day. <laughs> that is true, lady. Why well, no, two days ago, there was a dog day yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. National, yeah. There was National yeah. Dog Day. Yeah. It's National oh, what? Sticky Monday. Sticky Monday. That's what I heard that this morning. Those weird holidays <laughs> will attract people like nobody's business. So you just posted on your Tomorrow. I didn't do Sticky Bun, but are you asking me, <laughs> would you post it? I didn't, but yes, ma'am. So we first, we, we would post that on our business page? Yeah, why not? And then share it to our personal page? You could, or you could just share it on your business page, just for your, your members to follow it. But it's something that is it, it engages people. It makes people go, oh, wow, that's pretty cool, right? I don't think you're being totally right. ridiculous when you post about... Why not? Just have fun with yeah, it. That's, yeah, that's the whole point, have fun, yeah. Yeah, you don't want to be all serious and like, oh, you know, we're ladies and you know, I'm bad about No, just have fun with it. So yesterday I think was National Love Your Dog Day. Yeah. So you could follow that up with, and that's important to get the engagement. Many people uh, posted, hey, did you know today is National Dog Day? Post a photo of your dog. You know how much engagement that gets on posts on social media? Yeah. Or it's National Cat Day. I mean, there's not many cats. There are cat lovers out there. Yes. So post it. <laughs> there's National yeah. Cat Lover yeah. Day. Post it. Um, I understand it makes you more relatable, right? Exactly. That's the whole point. May not be geared to the organization, but it makes the organization a little bit more likable. Like, I know a weird holiday that's next weekend that none of you ladies will probably participate in. But next weekend is National Day of Unplugging. So from sundown on Friday to sundown on Saturday, the whole goal is, is not to have any interaction with unplugging or with technology. Oh, wow. It is the first weekend of March, yes. See, exactly, look. <laughs> but it brings awareness about reconnecting with people, so that's why that holiday exists. Well, they didn't say like appliances. They're like smartphones <laughs> and tablets. Right? You can video yourself unplugging. Another thing that you can do on Facebook specifically is that you can post inside of Facebook groups. Facebook groups tricks the algorithm into thinking more people look at your posts. So if there's community groups around you or swap and shop groups that you think that you can recruit members from, post in those groups. Because they, I mean, people really interact in groups, and when you post in a group, um, everyone sees what you post. Normally when you post on, on Facebook especially, you only see a few friends that you interact with, their posts. But when you get into groups and post like maybe business tips or just fun tidbits, more people get engaged, it, and it works. And I didn't think it works because people will scroll by it they may not necessarily love or like it, but they see it. I was at Fox 4 one day, and one of the engineers came running out of the room and was like, oh my God, Burton, I know you. You post in the Green Valley, residents of Green Valley group. Um, and I'm, I didn't know who this guy was, but he saw my tips and stuff, and he just felt the connection. So, I mean, it's kind of important at a news station, you have an engineer who's like running the state, you know, running the newscast, knowing who you are. So every time I go to Fox, I only know the guy's name. <laughs> I just, hey! I do that again. Yeah. <laughs> Fist bump, high five, yeah, whatever it takes, yeah. But Facebook groups is like the silent weapon in Facebook. You've got to post in groups because more people see what you post inside of a group on Facebook. So do it. Join, find some groups, join them that are near your chapter, and join those groups and post. Not, hey, come, we've got the membership drive. Just fun stuff, you know? And, you know, put it in there. So the groups, as far as your organization's page would, is, is concerned, you would post something in the group's Facebook page, right? Then you would share it inside the group on your personal page and then people will see it. 
Yes. Okay, so someone once mentioned um, going and doing this, but in order to help your business grow, they said the people in your Facebook groups that you join go in and invite them. Uh, you said friend, invite. Ed friend, friend, friend them. Oh, I heard fight. I'm like, that's not going to work. <laughs> you said fight. <laughs> like, that's not going to work. So is that a good thing to do or no? So wait a minute. Go into groups and do what again? Yeah, if you find, like, relative to your business. Right. You find Facebook groups relative to your business. And join the group. No, and like a business page or something like that? Those work. You know, like, they do have Facebook groups that are for, like, specifically for businesses. And then you can post ABWA stuff in those groups. Mm -hmm. That would work. Like say general, uh, like specialized foods, food gourmet, something like that. Right. And find anybody that's um, any of those members go in and friend them to invite them to be a friend. Well, I don't and necessarily know if I would friend them because if you're posting content in the group, they're seeing it anyway. They'll see it. So yeah. Okay. So there's no reason to friend them. Okay. Cool. Unless you like them, then yes. Yeah. <laughs> More than welcome to friend them, right? Bless you. Bless you. And then have fun with your brand too. See, there's uh, several. Variations of the integral part posted on a Dell and a Macintosh computer. So if you've got cards from your organization, if you're out to eat or whatever you're doing, like if you travel, post a, your your ABWA name tag or wherever. So like if you're a Fiji, you could take a photo and post it online. If you're somewhere exotic, some restaurant, have fun with it. Just take that brand everywhere and share it. People like seeing brands on different stuff. You know, if you had lobster, put it next to lobster. If you're traveling, if you're at the airport, put it on there. I know there's, where's, when's the next, if there's a lo local conference coming up, right? And regional, and then there's national, right? So if you're going to represent the organization, take your badge with you and post it on different stuff when you're at that regional or national conference. It's a great, great way to show that you're out working and making things happen. And people really do love seeing what you eat. They like seeing where you're going. So post those on there and have fun with it. Say happy birthday to your members. Post it on social media and share it. I mean, who doesn't like to be told happy birthday, right? And it helps that connection stay alive too when you tag them in a the post. So find a photo, happy birthday, share it, and let people know that it's so-and-so's birthday. I mean, I know you've seen it on other well-known social media sites that they'll tell, hey, one of our employees is celebrating a birthday or an anniversary or something like that. Even membership anniversaries are good, you know? <laughs> is that plan? I know, right? I like that. We're having a meeting. Yes, next social media tip, put your phone on mute. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, like and share posts from other networks. It helps people know that you're around. And share content. So if you've got members that have posted something cool, share it. Share it. Share it. Get your members to join your, your pages so that you can share their mm -hmm. stuff. And welcome them to put their content on your page too, so it's a win-win for everybody. So I went backwards. Isn't that horrible? Uh, number three, learn how to post effectively. My favorite part. Uh, keep your posts short. I kind of re relate to this, right? You know? But yes, like I said, the rules of posting online are 240 characters or less, a photo or a video. No long, lengthy story. No one's going to read it. Because most of us are looking at social media on our smartphones, right? So we just, just the facts, man. That's what we want. Hashtags are important. Did you know there are certain people on social media that follow a specific hashtag? No, I don't understand what that is. Yeah. Basically, a hashtag is an identifier. Well, you know it's a pound sign, right? Well, yeah, but I don't understand what has, I see all these hashtag this, hashtag, I don't understand what it is. It's an identifier that lets people find you or your brand on social media. So if your brand is business, then you would put hashtag business. So everyone that's following the hashtag of business, they'll find your stuff easier on social media. Um, Love is real popular, so I would put hashtag love. Uh, you could do, obviously, ABWA's got a national presence, so any post, if you're doing posts for ABWA, you would want to put ABWA as a hashtag because people that are in other chapters will find your stuff. Um, I'm trying to think some other hashtags. If it's national, like for whatever, if, I'm trying to think. Like National Day of, you could do a hashtag 
for that. Uh, anything relating to your post, you would want to put a hashtag for. Yeah. Someone explained to me that a hashtag you can. It's like a like an area code. So you're you're sending this message out to everyone in this certain area code. So you're right for ABWA, and then the at sign is when it's a direct number to the person. So my my uh, Facebook thing is at call Carolina your PA. So that is how you would call me out if you were posting something on. But you have to be careful with the at sign on social media. Like if it's for your business mm -hmm. or yourself, you want it, you want the at sign to be like your name yeah. or your organization's name. So that way it's, I mean, it's clever that you put all that stuff on there, but normally it's better just to have the at sign at your organization's name or your name so then people can find you quicker. Because yep. that's where it comes up on Google if you put your name on there, yes. So when I first learned about the hashtag, it directed you to photos, and I think they might have just been talking about Instagram, but then the hashtag could be, go to a website, it could go to pictures, it could go to what else? It can go to anything, because the hashtag is an identifier for whatever that topic is. So if you did hashtag love, it's gonna go to anything that has so the word love on it. Huge. Right, exactly. Okay. Or, you know, more commonly in this area, hashtag Kansas City. Because okay. most of the chapters are in the metro area. Or if you wanted to target it down a little bit more, Olin Park, Olathe, Blue Springs, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Yes, ma'am. The hashtag should not be the name of our business. This should be about what I, uh, the hashtag should be about what the post is about. Right, exactly. Okay. Yes. Yes. Or, you know, whatever you want to highlight. Yes, ma'am, you have your hand up. I've heard people like. mention registering hashtags. Is that a good thing to do or does it really matter? It doesn't matter. You just want to put those hashtags in your post, or your post kind of goes to the top. Because LinkedIn uses hashtags. How many of you ladies knew that? Yep. Yeah. You didn't know that? That means okay. like, I didn't. You don't do LinkedIn? I do, but I don't use the hashtags. Oh, well, they're, they're starting to pop up. So they're, that, they're, that's how people are locating other entrepreneurs and businesses on LinkedIn is through the hashtags. So use them on all of your social media platforms. And only use a total of three. If you use like a whole list of them, it looks like you're advertising. Yeah. So use a total of three. Pick three and just kind of go with that. So ask questions online. That's how we get people engaged, like uh, like you ladies are doing. When should I use hashtags? But any question is going to get someone engaged on social media. So ask them. It doesn't matter what the question is. Obviously, as long as it's not offensive. But yes, make, ask questions. It really gets people going like, what do you think of the snow? <laughs> are you ready for spring? You know, stuff like that. Are you gonna wait, wish for winter when spring comes? That, that sort of stuff, people get engaged in it. And I would try to do, when you ask questions, make sure it's relatable to what's going on in the world. You know, obviously no politics, but if there's something that's trending that you can ask a question about, like, how do you feel that Payless Shoes is going away? You know, or how do you feel about, uh, I know a question I asked that was good, and this will work for anything. Self checkout at Walmart. Oh, uh, see, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, I guarantee if you post that or the pay less on your social media, you will get that engagement. So those are the things that you want to look and ask questions about online. And but when you do it, make sure you take a photo. Take a photo because when I did the self checkout at Walmart, I took a photo of the self checkout and posted it. Because everyone knows that, what do they call it, scan and go? Yeah. yeah, scan and go. Everyone saw that and it's like they saw red, like, ah, where's my W-2? I'm working for Walmart now, you know? So yeah, ask questions, but make sure they're relatable. Know what time to post? I love this. Huh? Well, if you have your schedule, yeah, we're getting to that. Yeah. So when's the best time to post? I will tell you immediately, for all of the social media networks that I will show up here, the best time to post is after lunch. That's when everything, if you, if you remember anything out of this presentation, <laughs> make your post after lunch. That's when most people are on social media. You can do it early in the morning, or you can do it after lunch, or Facebook, especially, that's the one standout, is in the evening time. I've posted mm -hmm. stuff eight, nine o'clock, and it's gone crazy. Is that yeah. because you're right then, and other stuff can get pushed? Right, exactly, well? yes, okay. yes. So the prime time, their lunch, and you know, six to eight. Working at Right, exactly. Yeah, rather than nap time, they're like, let me see what's going on. <laughs> yeah. But that rule happens with Facebook. Same thing with Twitter. Twitter's early in the morning after lunch, and 
Not so much in the evening time. Not many people tweet in the evening. Celebrities do, but your average folks are tweeting usually after lunch. So from like one to three, one to four. Uh, Instagram. Instagram is almost the same rules as Facebook now. Just after lunch. Um, until in the wee hours of the night. No one here is going to do that, right? <laughs> they do. Does Facebook own Instagram? Yes, they do. Okay, so they're connected. Safe. <laughs> Looking at you. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so, I got you. We're going outside after we <laughs> So, if Facebook's going down, Instagram's not. Okay. Because everyone's gravitating. Instagram has not had any data breaches mm -hmm. uh, okay. that have been like publicized. Right. But yeah. But yeah, Instagram is. More popular than ever. It's got streaming video, which we're going to talk about next. People are loving it. And you can hashtag it to death. LinkedIn, LinkedIn is funny because you can post early in the morning and after lunch, but LinkedIn, no one's on LinkedIn on the weekends. And I forgot to say that about Facebook, Twitter. On the weekends from 10 to 2, you can post to Facebook and have high engagement because people are after 2 o'clock, most people are doing their Saturday or Sunday stuff. But LinkedIn, Tuesday through Thursdays, it's going to be your high engagement because it's still considered the business mm -hmm. social media platform. Mm -hmm. And then Pinterest is weekend in the two because it's, you know, pinning or in the evenings people will pin. But I can't see many organizations using Pinterest, but it's not a bad idea mm -hmm. just to set one up for the heck of it, you know. Uh, check your results on your posts, please. When you post something, you want to check and see which posts are working and which ones aren't. Pretty darn simple. They've got all sorts of numbers and stuff behind the scenes, but it's pretty darn simple. You post something, you look later a day later to see how many people are engaged in it. And then you know that's the type of post that I need to do on social media because you've got to play with it. Because you used to be able to post something and say, hey, go look at our YouTube channel. But now Facebook and LinkedIn, and they're like, well, we would prefer you watch video here, not go to YouTube. So posting a link to a YouTube video is not cool anymore. So don't do it. But check your results when you post so that you know this is what's working, this is what's not working. And it also helps you keep an eye on the algorithms too, because if you put wording in there and say, well, wait a minute, I just posted, you know, yesterday and we've got 200 likes and loves and stuff, and today there's only like 15. So, you know, analyze your content so that you can see which posts are effective. Uh, oh, and we're talking about those social media algorithms, which, it's tricky because they change all the time. But I can tell you what's happening like now, first quarter 2019, any post that says sell, like not sale, sale away, but I'm selling something, the algorithms on all of the social media networks will push them down. If you share a link to another website or to YouTube, it gets pushed down because you're leaving the social media network. But if you're selling, buy, like, like this post, share this post, you put that in the feed or in your uh, social media post, it's gonna push it down. You can share a post, but you don't wanna do like my page or share this post. You know, you might wanna use more um, different wording like, oh gosh, pass the love. You know, not share the love, you share the post, but pass it along to your friends. That's the key word to share it, please. But yes, that's what you want to do as far as your post. You had a question. Um, does it matter if you put like your link, your business link thing? Like, okay, say you post a graphic and then you put, you don't put your business link in the post, mm -hmm. but then you go back in the comment and put your link in there. Oh, you're trying to cheat the algorithm, right? Mm -hmm. It's not gonna work. Because you know, social media scans your photos too, so if there's a web link in your photo, then it's gonna suppress it too. I noticed a post that went down the other day. A friend gave me a jar of like hot ideas and it had her phone number on there. And it, didn't, it, didn't, it didn't, it didn't get, cause it was seen as like an advertising post cause it had a number in there. So it like suppressed it, like only 15 people saw it. Whereas the post before with the dogs got 200 likes to it. I got 200 likes pushing a shopping cart, you know? I was upset because this lady like lined up her cart like I worked at the grocery store. I'm like, 
I was just trying to be the nice guy. I probably should have kept her car. She's like, here you go, buddy. And I'm like, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Not would you mind if I take your car. Or, you know. Yeah. So, yes, you do have to watch out for that. So numbers, you don't want to put phone numbers for stuff because that algorithm will see it as you trying to promote something. And I kind of was because I'm like, oh, this is sweet. And had her number on it. And it's like, oh, you know, call Tammy for, you know, if you want coaching needs or stuff like that. But Facebook's like, you're not going to. So you'd want to write out each number, spell each number out. <laughs> Wait, not that. Post, go to her page, you know, check her page out. Yeah, you know, that'd be the easiest thing to do. So number four, I love saying this, for the love of God, you got to use live video. How many ladies have used live video, Facebook Live, live? It's like the halves have used social media, and then this half is like, eh. It seems corny sometimes. Yeah. I will tell you this, for an organization, live video is pushed out to five times as many people as a standard post. Mm -hmm. And the longer you're live, the longer Facebook is pushing that post out. Is it there will, a limit on going live? What did you say? Time limit. Three hours. Wow. Yeah, I don't think that's that's long. Three <laughs> hours, yes. And Facebook the entire time is pushing it out to all of your connections. So if you do video, they recommend on all of the channels, whether it be Instagram, Facebook and LinkedIn is starting to come out with live video. The longer you do live video, the more, the further your post is going to, or your, yeah, the further reach you're going to get with your post. Especially if you have a page for your business, or if you create an event on Facebook for, you know, for your organization. I always recommend that if you you create a, an event, number one, because that gets if you have a monthly meetings. Create events on Facebook. I know it seems like, oh, this is just a waste of time to create an event. You need to because you can utilize that event for many purposes. Number one, Facebook is marketing events to everybody. So like if you go to Facebook events and go, what's going on today? And then you've got the ABWA event listed there and you're looking for new members and you put it under the networking category because people do search Facebook for that, Facebook's gonna share it. And then when you're hosting your event or when you're about to have your event, Go live within the event, because you can create a live video from directly within the event. Yeah. So does that have to be public or private? Oh, you, when you create the event, yes, you do want it to be public, especially if you're trying to attract people to go to it. But yeah, when you do the live video, it does it from within the event, so that way if people start checking out your organization, they can see all the fun things you do, like the left, right, uh, <laughs> the hokey pokey, is what, yeah, what it seemed like. But yeah, there's many ways that you can do live video, you can do events. But you could showcase membership with live video. Many people don't like live video, but you just say, hey, look, if you want to get some free publicity, get on this live video. Mm -hmm. And the good thing about live video now, it doesn't have to be polished. Like, I think Browning Groupin has like this whole channel on YouTube that's got these polished videos. But of course, Browning Groupin's pulling millions and millions of dollars a year that they could dedicate for that. For a small nonprofit, it's okay, it doesn't have to be polished. That's the whole purpose of live video. It's supposed to be raw, edgy, if you goof up, on the video, that's fine. If you drop your phone in the middle of the video, that's okay too. That's what people people like. That's what they go for. That's why it's a super. It's a channel on YouTube called Epic Fail, and most of those videos are taken with smartphones. And it's some of it's horrible quality. But when you see somebody wipe out or something, people are entertained by that, yeah. and that's what engages people. So the same thing with your live videos for your organization. Just go live and raw and go with it. But you can showcase people. If you know if you're doing stuff for ABWA, you can give out business tips every week. You know if you're running your own chapter, uh, and they can be short and sweet, two minutes, minute long. Just make it quick and easy for people to just you know see what you're about and get you know get to like you, like, love you more. That's what live video does. You think you're seeing that person? You know it's like TV celebrities, right? You see them on TV all the time. You're engaged with them. Live video does the same thing for your organization. So do it, do it. Branding's important on social media. Quick thing, what you want to do, obviously, put your organization's logo in the logo field. And the thing that many organizations fail at is putting the banner. LinkedIn, Facebook, and is it not Instagram? Twitter. Twitter. Twitter has a banner. Put a banner. And the important thing about your banner for your organization is not that you're an organization, but how you help people. See, there's our banner up there for Integral. We repaired all devices. It lets people know, doesn't matter if you have a phone, tablet, or computer, we can fix it. It's got all the stuff there, too. I think it's all Mac stuff. But that banner is important because you want to let people know how you can help them out. 
that's important. So if you, other than, I forget what I said earlier, live video, you better, you need to remember out of everything tonight, uh, banner, and then whatever I said earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot it. Which and I really expect forgot. you to remember it. So finally, yeah, don't let social media consume you because, uh, ma'am, in the, what's your name in the blue jacket? Her. Oh, oh her. <laughs> her. Okay, That's whatever. Andrea. Andrea said it earlier. What about all the social media stuff? You know, I, I'm going to be doing it and it's going to take up so much time. There are such animals out there called social media dashboards, and there's several. Um, my favorite is Hootsuite. And it's free, up to three social media channels, but you download Hootsuite with a web browser or on your smartphone, and you can manage, meaning schedule, out all of your social media posts. So on Sundays, when you're not ABWNA in it, and maybe you just want to drink your favorite beverage, alcoholic or non, you can uh, schedule those posts out in advance, so that way you don't have to worry about your social media stuff during the week. There's Buffer, which is another social media dashboard, and it's free. You can do up to three social media um, channels, and it allows you to analyze the results of each one. But rather than going into like, if you set up Hootsuite or Buffer, or the other one is um, Social or Sprout Social, so if you were to go into those social media dashboards, you could maintain your whole social media um, schedule. You can look at the likes. You can look at the analytics, and then you can post from one platform. And that's handy from an organization if you're trying to manage multiple social media accounts. Do you have a, prefer I mean, do you have a preference? Is one better than another? None of them are better. It's just whatever works for you. And that's what I always say about technology. Mm -hmm. There is no such thing as better. There's Windows users, there's Mac users. Macs aren't better. In fact, I think all Windows and Mac parts come out of the same factory in Taiwan. Right. Mm -hmm. So. There, there's no better. It's just what's going to work best for you. So try them out. Figure out what's going to work best for you and your schedule. So, and then finally, you can schedule on Facebook. So let's just say you had a campaign on Facebook, then you can schedule your post on Facebook. But Facebook will only let you schedule out three months in advance, and of course, it's only Facebook scheduling. But if you want to hit more social media channels, you've got to use Sprout Social, Buffer, and Hootsuite. And then finally, I love that help sign out there. Don't let it over consume you. So if you get over, over consumed with social media, ask for help or use one of the social media dashboard deals. So I think that's it. Yeah. 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 I was going to say, stay connected with me on social media. Or are we going to do the, are we going to do the LinkedIn hashtag jingle <laughs> later? Yes. Yes. We'll start recording. Yes. You had a question. Yes. So um, I manage several business pages, I guess. Right. Um, and I, I, we, turn, we look at the trending, we look at the insights all the time. So uh, I've noticed, it seems even more so lately, that people are not liking or commenting or sharing. They, there's, I think it's, is it reach? People are scanning it, they'll see it, but they don't interact Respond. with it. Why do you think that Isn't is? Isn't it supposed to be the more you interact with something, the higher it'll go? That's correct. It's not happening though, people are not. What are you posting? So like this <laughs> council, I manage the, page and I post you know the events, I make an event page, I post what's coming up, special stuff I do for a chapter two. But not everyone doesn't want to see that all the time because There's, that's probably true. Yeah, they but want to see I'm the like, fun stuff. Why am I bothering, you know? Because that's, you're not you gotta post fun stuff. So. Uh, but I do post look go look at today's <laughs> Today's what did you post? But you know it doesn't always come up in the feed. No. Right. No, right. right. But is that because no. people are not No, it's because of the algorithm. The algorithm. So yes, if algorithm. we all respond with something, hey, that sounds fun, if everybody gets on there and comments, that should bump it up. Exactly. Right. 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 So right. even though we know right. it's just Meg, yeah. <laughs> right. and we, wow. we just put a little thing on there that bumps it up for everybody. Yeah. Hey, don't forget this. Mm -hmm. I put pictures all the time. But are you putting and like, I like nothing? Are you putting? Is it links or photos or what? Video? Uh, I, I'll do like stock photo or a clip art or um, I don't. Do, I haven't done videos, although I created video from our chapter events and posted that. Hey, look what we did at our chapter, and I get like nothing. No mm -hmm. likes. No mm -hmm. nothing. I'm like. Okay, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> Make it, you, you're, 
sometimes you've got to mix those posts up to make Facebook think that people want to see your page yeah. with the fun stuff. So yes, it may be all ABWA chapter related, but every now and then you just got to throw the fun post in there that people will like it and then share it with other people. Like the game we just played. Yes, like the game you just played. I'm going to do it see if they make people pay attention. Yes. Have you heard of the alignable you? Yeah, I have. Do you know anything about it? No, I've heard of it, but what is it? You got anything? Kind of like LinkedIn. What is it? But it's more local to you. Oh, it's like another social media platform? Oh, no. <laughs> why, why, why would you, I mean, what, what no, benefit I'm, are you going to have out of it? It's not, I, people, are, yeah. when, once they start talking about it in the news and people are gravitating to it, then that's when you want to pay attention. But for right now, well, someone has to start it. Do you want to be the one that's no. trying to start the one? More effort. Stick with what's going out there. Do another popular social media platform than align you, whatever that is, you know, or alignable you. Any other questions? I'll be around for a little bit, so yeah, you, you were too embarrassed to ask. Yeah, you can seek me out. But, but thanks for having me. I appreciate Thank it. You. Oh, no problem. I'm putting my phone still recording. Oh, look at that.